Hi, Martin here. Today we're going to install a set of HO camshafts in our 4.7 liter. And this will be uh, any 4.7 liter Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Mitsubishi. Got these out of pick apart for $54. Got them cleaned up. We're also going to install a set of solid lifters in there as well. Well, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, passenger side here. We've got to get rid of the battery, the battery tray. This side is definitely the hardest. Actually, the hardest to get to would be this very rear cylinder here because it's underneath this cowl. Start with a negative terminal always first. And then when you put them back on, positive comes first. There's a clamp down here that holds the battery in place. It takes a 10 millimeter to, for the bolt. Remove that clamp. And then you're ready to remove the battery. I've had this tray out once before to put the headers in. I believe there is either three or four bolts. You'll also find a uh, connector for the, this is a battery temperature sensor. And there is a, a wire connection underneath here that you'll need to unfasten. There's one 10 millimeter right down in here. You'll need to take your fuse block off. Many times you'll find these clips that hold the fuse block on here broke. Anyway, they, I've seen them that way many times. And there is a bolt. There's two clips here that hold on the fuse block. Actually, it's, I believe it's three. Sorry, three clips. All mine are broke. That we need to get this up and out of here. At least so you can get to the uh, bolt that is right back here. And then one more bolt right there. Okay, next I'm going to remove the uh, oil fill tube right here. You got four 8mm bolts that hold it on. I've already got two of them removed. One here and one across from there. I've got the one left here and then there's another one down there underneath that piece of plastic that you have to pull off and you have one a stud there. You need to remove the nut. Okay, to uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the belt. So I'm possibly going to remove the uh, compressor. Got this uh, 15 millimeter socket welded onto a bar. You can just buy these made for removing the belts. Just like that, and release it now. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take the bolts out that are holding the compressor in, the AC compressor, just so I can get like this line out of my way. Of course, we'll leave the line disconnected. We don't want to release the Freon. We're just enough to move it out of our way. That's all we're doing here. Now this part, it's 
See, as you start getting stuff out of the way, you can definitely see the valve cover now. Okay, I'm also going to take the transmission control unit out as well, just to make things a little bit easier to get into here. It's probably not totally necessary, but it's going to make the job easier. Okay, I set the transmission control module up here. I've got all the connectors removed from all the coils and the injectors and a few other connectors in here. And then you got, you just got to do the best you can here. I mean, you can see you get a fairly good pathway here to work on the valve cover and get to the bolts. And it gets really tight back here. And that'll be a lot of fun working on the, the rearward cylinders. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get these bolts removed and try to get that valve cover out of there. Okay, on the ECM here, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it so I can get that harness up and not over the valve cover. It's just going to make things a little easier. By doing that, you uh, depress right there and then just pull these connectors off like so actually I didn't have to even take that one off but that's how they're disconnected and then just snap right back on so now I can take this harness up and out of here and get it out of the way okay now you can see right back here and we've got two bolts left one right down there, and there's another one you can't see. It's more of a feel thing. It's back over there. And they're all 10 millimeter. Here we go. I got a couple extensions to swivel there with a 10 millimeter socket on the back. And this is how I'm getting my bolt out of there. want you to see that. Okay, I got all the bolts loose. This freaking AC line was in here. Alright, I got the valve cover removed. The video card memory filled up, so I didn't actually get the video of it coming out. But yeah, it's a tight fit. It came out the way you saw me pulling it out. It looks pretty nice in here, clean. Um, this cylinder head has been replaced by the previous owner. Okay, with your valve cover removed, to remove the rocker itself, I got a really thin 10 millimeter wrench that seems to work really well. Place it underneath the lifter right here. Place it underneath the lifter right here. All I'm going to do is lift up on the wrench. And it pops out. Like so. Then you can grasp your lifter And pull it out. Now to reinstall it, bring your rocker arm in here, place it on the valve stem, and line it up with the lifter down here. Now using a large blade screwdriver or a pry bar, place it right in there like so. Now you're just going to pull it toward the lifter and it snaps right on. Now on this side of the engine it's more of the same but a lot easier. You don't have as much stuff, you know, there's hardly anything over the valve cover other than the wiring. The engine is literally five-eighths of an inch further that way. 
Uh, they are not centered in the engine compartment. So it gives you more room in here. Um, but go ahead and start disconnecting all the coils and your fuel injectors simply by pushing the little button on the top there, the little tab, and pulling back. The injectors are uh, pretty much similar. Just a little tab on there, pushing on those and pulling them off. There's also a couple other sensors that you may have to disconnect and they all disconnect in the same fashion by pushing the tab and pulling. Now you can see once you get all the wiring out of the way this doesn't look too bad. Uh, and then this cylinder is not as far back as the one on the uh, right side. Okay now we're ready to go ahead and pull the bolts out of the valve cover. Okay, with all the bolts loosened up, Okay, with the valve cover removed, now we can go ahead and pop out the rockers that um, do have the lobe toward the top. It doesn't have to be directly to the top, but you definitely don't want the uh, valve compressed in trying to pop these out. Like that one right there, it's got the valve compressed. This one here is in the perfect position. Be prepared to catch that rocker too, because they can kind of pop out of there and go fall into the ground. Okay, looks like we got all but three of them out. Um, now it comes time just to rotate the engine by the crankshaft. Okay, I got myself a 21 millimeter socket, and this is a ratcheting type breaker bar that I'm using. I'm going to put this on the harmonic balancer bolt to turn the engine. Do not turn it on the camshaft. You, you're putting a lot of stress on that chain and your tensioners and all that only turn it by the crankshaft using like this setup right here. Okay, I'm going to rotate the engine around where the lobe is coming up to the uh, top side up here. There we go. That's good. Now I can get the other three on this side. and pull out the remaining lifters.
We also want to remove the power steering pump. We don't need to disconnect the lines, just remove the bolts that hold the power steering pump to the uh, cylinder head and you use a 13 millimeter deep socket. You pass it through the pulley and loosen your bolts that way. And then just by rotating it, the pulley to the next bolt and there are three of those. And then once you get the bolts loose, all you got to do is really just push that right down there and it can just sit there. Okay, I've rotated the engine to where you can see here the right and left mark is facing upward. Right there is a timing mark. Now I don't have it rotated properly. Let's say we're going to do a timing chain uh, change out on this, but I have it rotated to where my spanner wrench will get on here very easily and we want to make a mark that corresponds from this mark here to the timing chain. So we make sure we get that cam gear back on there exactly on the same tooth that you had it on there before. Not <laughs> That engine is not going to run very good at all. Now on this side, this head was changed out at one time before me. Um, you can see that they put another mark on it right there. And then here's a timing mark right there, the factory one. And then we're going to go ahead and make a mark on the chain right there. All right, the next step is I've got a timing chain wedge. This is made for the 3.7, 4.7 timing chains. Um, we're going to need that because we got to retain this timing mark. Well, if you remove that sprocket without putting a wedge in here, there's tensioners in here and they will push in and I mean you're done. You will have to remove the entire timing cover and redo the entire timing marks. So, we've got to put this wedge in here to help retain the timing mark itself to keep everything where it is right now. Uh, you can get these online. They're around $28 or so with shipping. And then on the front it tells you which cylinder. Right cylinder up, left cylinder up. We're doing the left cylinder. This faces upward. You could make one out of a piece of wood. I've seen people do that. Slide it in here. And I'm just going to make sure that's properly lined up in there. There we go. Push it down in there a little ways where it's nice and snug. Okay, next step. I've got a spanner wrench that I've made. You may have seen this in a previous video. I'll put a link on here. Okay, we're going to place that on the cam gear. Like so. Then our 15 mil. Wrench on here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh. Wow. That was tight. They say it's torqued to 90 foot-pounds. Boy, it felt a lot tighter coming loose, that's for sure. Just gonna make sure that's 
still in there nice and snug. Once you get it broke loose, it'll come right off of your fingers. Okay. All right, now we can go ahead. I'm not going to take this off just yet, but we can go ahead and break loose all the bearing bolts here. 10 millimeter. All the caps are numbered and they have an arrow uh, facing forward. Okay, now we're ready to remove the gear. There we go. You should be able to just lift out the camshaft. Just like so. Okay, at this point we're ready to install the camshaft. Naturally you're going to want to have, you're lining up this pin with the slot right here. That's very important to get that in there correctly because uh, I've seen situations where people don't get it in there right and they, they think they do and they tighten the bolt down and it is not in there. And I can feel that it is in there. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody understands how important it is on this, get this cam gear back on. Now you're looking for that. I'm rotating the camshaft right now. Right there's that dowel. I'm going to rock this on there. There. Now, once I get it on there like that, now I just want to make sure Grab a hold of the camshaft, rock it back and forth, and you can see it is definitely on there. You want to make sure about that before you put that this bolt in here and torque it down. Now you saw how easy with the wedge and everything, I put the cam gear right back on. Yeah, I'm just going to snug that up for right now. Now before putting the caps on, I'm just going to put some lubricant on all the journals here. Okay, I've got the number three cap. Make sure you have it facing the right way.
Okay, for right now, I'm just going to snug these into place, and then we're going to torque them to spec. Alright, using an inch pound torque wrench at 100 inch pounds, we're going to torque the, these cam bearing bolts down, starting with the center one. And then move to this cap. And then I like to go through and just make sure, real quick, Now we're ready to torque the cam bolt right here, and that goes to 90 foot-pounds. All right, using our spanner wrench here, placing it on here, so a torque wrench set to 90 foot-pounds. Jeez, that's tight. There it goes, right there. Perfect. Okay. Now we're ready to pull the wedge out. There we go. Now all you need to do is repeat the exact same thing we just did over here on the other side. And we got both camshafts in and then we'll go, we'll start with the returning the lifters and rockers into place and we're going to be installing the solid lifters. Now all you really need is a half inch and a nine sixteenths. This one here at the end uh, Eight millimeter seems to work the best. You really don't need it because you can just sit there and use your fingers to adjust. And then of course you're going to need the dial caliper to make your adjustments, to make your measurements. All right, a half inch goes on there just perfectly. Nine sixteenths on the nut, and I'm just I'm going to loosen this up. I want it to grow a little bit. And then with the nut loose, I turn this outward and that's making it grow. Now I'm going to shoot for something right at a little over 49 millimeters. Okay, we can see we're a little short right there. Turn it 
turning that check my measurement oh yeah okay we got 49.05 millimeters I like that now to tighten it up two wrenches like so and you're just going to pull, pull them together <clears throat> good and tight right there okay here I got one of them adjusted I'll show you what I came up with okay that particular one is right at 48.76 millimeters drop it in the hole there grab your rocker now when you put this in here you're going to want to line it up on the valve stem first swing it over here like so and I got like a pry bar or a flat screwdriver might work it depends on what spot on the cylinder head you're putting it in at one works better than the other snap it up there just like so okay now we want to check our clearances I don't know if you can see that I have this lobe is pointing upward and so the rocker is touching the base circle of the cam shaft Okay, I got a, that is a .0015, that fits in there easily, or nicely. This being a three thousandths, and it does not fit in there. Okay, I mean it wants to, it's pretty, wants to be tight. So, we're within spec. It's tighter than the three thousandths, but it, it fits in with the, uh, 0.0015 so this one's good this is the first cylinder I did work on it did take me a while now what I've been doing too is if I see another cylinder like looking down here this one right here it's pointing up nicely you could do this cylinder next and uh, get that one done that way you don't have to rotate the engine as often and then you can bounce around to the other side as well and see which cylinders you can do on those okay I'm going to rotate the motor to get this lobe up here okay not only does it get this cylinder we can do the next one right next to it Okay, I got it pre-adjusted. This is at 49.06 millimeters. We'll see how that works out. Bring the rocker in, the stem side first. Pull that lifter out of there. See if that makes any difference. It's kind of made it a little easier to install. There we go. Grab your screwdriver like so. And just pull down. And it snaps into place. I do feel some wiggle in there. Just try this two thousandths. Oh yeah, that passes right through there. We'll just go right to the max. This is four thousandths. Well, I was able to get it in there. I don't, I don't like that. So, I'd rather be just a little on the tight side. I don't want to go right all the way to the max. 
pop that out of there. I got some other lifters already pre-adjusted. Try this one again. Actually, let's pass that through here. Like so, hold that. I was able to get the three thousandths in it, but I cannot get the four. I'm going to call that one good. Okay, pass the rocker in here. Put it on the valve stem. Got my pre-adjusted lifter. And hope it works out. Okay, now on this part of the cylinder head, this pry bar works better than the screwdriver did. There we go. On that one, I cannot get the three thousandths in. Okay, and that one there, the point zero zero one five, fit nicely. I'm gonna go with that. Alright, I got this one adjusted at uh, 49.13 millimeters. We'll see how that works out. I can get the, the minimum clearance one in there. Let's try a two thousandths. Yep, I can see where that is going to be good right there. Yeah, I cannot get a a point zero zero two five in there. We're gonna call that one good. I went through and I double checked all the clearances, bringing the lobe right up to the top, checking the clearance. I did make some adjustments to a few of them. I'm shooting for two thousandths to three thousandths, even though the tolerance is point uh, zero zero one five to four thousandths. I'm just going to keep everything nice and tight tolerances to two to three thousandths. That way I got a little play either way. Now, just before I put the valve cover on, I'm just going to shoot a little uh, 5W30 on all the lobes. And 
this uh, camshaft you know doesn't have any oil in it generally they they hold oil in them and so you don't end up with a very much of a dry start and I'm just going to try to prevent that I have a little bit on, on there now make sure your uh, gasket surface here is nice clean dry I've taken a uh, denatured alcohol with a rag on there wiped it down There is no real torque spec for these valve cover bolts. But it, it, the way they're designed, you tighten them down until you stop, until it stops. But I would draw them down equally. I got a few missing in here right now. I'm going to go grab those and snap them into place. Just want to get this started. Okay, and once you get all the bolts tightened down, go ahead and return all the connectors. Your, start with your fuel injectors and then do your coils. Right. Hours later, I finally got all these lifters adjusted and the rockers put back in. This is on the uh, right side of the motor. A little bit more difficult just because like the air conditioning lines here and stuff get in your way. But, uh, I'm ready to put the valve cover back on. Alright, I got this side all done. I checked all the clearances. We're good here. I got the new valve cover gasket ready. Now you gotta weasel this valve cover through here. And then do it without trying to damage the new gasket. there. Now I left the bolts all out of this. Just it makes it easier getting it back in here. I'll squeeze those back in here afterwards. There. Now we can bolt our power steering pump back into place. As soon as we get that done we can go ahead and uh, put the serpentine belt back on. All right I got it all back together. Batteries in. I'm going to fire this thing up. Hopefully everything goes great. I'm going to just leave off the air cleaner for just right now. And uh, everything is good. I'll put that back on and, and then it'll be take it out for a drive and see what kind of uh, seat in the pants feeling we get out of this thing. See how the uh, butt dyno works. I let it run for like about five minutes there. Sounds real good, revs up nice. Um, I get the uh, 
my Ram air system put back on this and take it out for a drive. I'm gonna probably just get a few more miles on it, you know, maybe a couple hundred, and I'm gonna dump the oil on this, change it, because just any contaminants that got in there, I'm, it, and it's due for an oil change. And uh, I'll let you know how this goes. All right, I'm, I'm just tickled that it all sounds great and nothing fell apart. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, I'll be back. fun I uh, I'm pretty happy with it I definitely noticed an improvement on the acceleration you know the the HO cams will make a difference the solid lifters uh, they are gonna add some engine noise so I'm gonna drive this thing for a while you know probably put like four or five thousand miles on it see how it goes and I may get back in there again and adjust the lifters one more time. You know, go to a tighter, tighter tolerance. Uh, something down to more closer to two thousandths of an inch. And see how that goes. And hopefully that maybe quiets it up just a little bit. Maybe I got a few cylinders I got, you know, that are at the three thousandths mark. And that's adding some noise to the engine. So other than that, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I want to thank you all for watching. And if you haven't before, if you please subscribe to me right down here. Hit that subscribe button or that little icon. And right next to the subscribe button is that little bell symbol. Hit on that. And that way you get notifications of any upcoming videos as they come out. Alright, well thanks again for watching.